In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to repair a Spectrum DX6i scroll wheel. Um, we'll be repairing this PCB board that has a rotary encoder and a select push button switch. Um, the issue with this radio I'm having is the rotary encoder quit working, so when I would scroll scroll the wheel in here, I wouldn't it wouldn't select anything. It was stuck, so. Um, We'll go ahead and get started on that. So the things you're going to need um, for this repair is you're going to need the components. Um, you're going to need one of these. This is a rotary encoder um, made by Alps Encoders. Um, I'll list the part number and the description. Um, and if you have issues with your enter button, uh, you'll need one of these. Uh, it's a a tactile surface mount switch. Um, this one's by Panasonic. I will list the part number for this as well. Um, tools you're going to need. You're going to need a uh, soldering iron, preferably one that is variable temperature. We'll probably be soldering, desoldering around uh, 680 degrees Fahrenheit. It seems to be a pretty good number. Um, you'll also need solder. I use this uh, 6040 leaded Rosencore solder. Um, seems to work pretty good for this sort of job. Um, also you're going to need flush cut pliers because we'll be cutting uh, we will be cutting the components off which will destroy them to desolder and clean up clean up this board. Um, you'll also need a Phillips screwdriver. I'm sure if you're watching this video you've already taken this radio apart but I'll go ahead and show you what you need to do to take it apart. So to uh, disassemble the radio from the beginning, you're going to have six screws um, on the back. You have one here, 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 and here, and then these two. Uh, don't worry about the ones on the face. You don't need to pull those. So go ahead and take your Phillips screwdriver and remove those six Phillips screws. Okay, once you have your six screws out, the radio will open up. Open up like so. And you have to be careful with the wires. You don't break them. Once you have it open, you're going to remove two more screws um, that secure the PCB to the case. So right here is the two mounting holes, one there and one there, and the PCB is uh, mounted in there like so, and you'll have to disconnect this cord and plug from the receptacle on this other circuit board. Once that's done you remove this piece and you don't need the radio anymore. You can go ahead and set it together, set it off to the side, and now we'll get started with the PCB board repair. Now that we have our PCB board out, um, the next step is going to be removing the encoder. I don't know if you noticed it, but this encoder is destroyed. Um, before I knew of the part, I could not find the part of this, so I tried to take it apart and clean it. You get it to work with no success, and I tried to remove it and and uh, was unsuccessful, so it's pretty beat up. But now we're going to have to destroy it completely to remove it from the board. So you just take some small um, snips and uh, go ahead and just cut off the legs of, uh, of each piece. There is five legs on these that you're going to have to remove. Go ahead and cut those. Um, cutting the edge ones, this piece came off because I had bent it out. But don't worry about resaving this thing, it is it is toast. So I'll go ahead and cut these wires. Or I guess these uh, contacts off. We'll be removing them later. Go 
Okay, it's removed. Um, so on the board you'll have these the holes, through holes. Um, these ones are open right now because I had already removed them, trying to remove it, but you'll have to remove them. And then these three, the solder pads are on the back side. So let's go ahead and desolder the rest of these and clean this up. Okay, now we're ready to uh, to desolder. Got your soldering iron and uh, get your tip tinned. Um, you know, use basic soldering techniques for this. I'm gonna avoid heating it too much. Um, like I said, I have uh, my soldering iron set around 660 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove these pins. Put a little solder on there. Might have to grab it with a pair of tweezers or something else like it to get it out. Poke it through, whatever you gotta do. Get those suckers out of there. Almost seems like poking them out the other side is working the best here. Heating it up and poking them out. Okay, that seems to work pretty good. Go ahead and flip it over. Uh, I might not be able to flip it. Maybe we'll adjust our helping hands here to hold it sideways. So we can heat one side and tug the other. All right, out they come. Okay, I'm gonna wanna remove that old solder. So we'll go ahead and use a desoldering braid, which I forgot to mention that in the tools be a good thing to use. There we go. Turn it up to 700. Tin the tip a little bit better. And now we're removing the old solder. Once you get that cleaned up, we'll go ahead and move on to installing the new encoder. Okay, and I forgot to mention, same process on the the enter switch. You could try to desolder, uh, desolder these two pads here and here, or dike them off and then uh, clean it up, desolder it, and put your new switch in, just like we're about to put the new rotary encoder in. This switch is still working, so I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, we're ready to install the new rotary encoder. So go ahead and get your holes lined up and slip it in there just like this. And we'll go ahead and solder the back side again. So I want to make sure they, uh, that it stays mounted properly. Um, this one's holding itself pretty well, but you could you could bend these uh, ears just a little bit just to help it stay. Okay, now I've got it mounted uh, where I want it. Got my helping hands holding the base, and now we'll go ahead and uh, tin my soldering tip. And we'll solder this thing on here.
once you're done soldering, it should look something like that. Component is secure. You'll want to put a little extra solder in here. I might have done a little bit too little. Um, you want to fill these holes, but also you don't want to keep it on there too long. And uh, now we'll go ahead and assemble the radio and see if this thing works. Okay, now we're going to assemble the radio and put the PCB that we just fixed back in. So you should have your scroll wheel. Go ahead and insert the scroll wheel into the, the hex center of the encoder. That'll hold the scroll wheel in place as we put it in. You want to make sure that your uh, ends of the scroll wheel go into the proper grooves in the case. And once that is down in place, you'll secure it with the two smaller Phillips screws that you removed when you took it out. Once that's done, reach under, make sure it scrolls. And it's in place and it selects. That feels good. Uh, then you take your wire, your connector, and hook it up in its receptacle. And now you're good to go to put the the back case back onto the radio with the removed six screws. Uh, Okay, we got the radio back together, batteries in. Here's the moment of truth. Let's see if this repair works. Thumbs on. We have select. And scroll does work. Look at that. Well, I hope this video helped you out, and uh, thanks for watching. One other thing I wanted to mention. I have a Generation 2 Spectrum. And I had had this apart to adjust the uh, back of the sticks, the frictions, and to lubricate it. And I was looking at the board, the PCB board for this scroll wheel, and it looks identical to the DX6i. So I haven't tried it, and I'm not going to tamper with this radio to find out, but uh, I'm pretty sure that the part numbers I used for this repair of the DX6i will in fact fix the PCB of the Generation 2 Spectrums. Um, if any of you have tried it, leave a comment. I'd like to know so I can keep parts on hand to fix this one if I ever need to. Thank you.